carving and attaching a stock comb to a blunderbuss. William Hovey Smith, 2013. I am the author of Extreme Muzzle Loading, and I hunt with muzzle loading guns, including blunderbuss. And I wanted to add a wooden stock comb to this blunderbuss. I'm Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And it's 2 30 in the morning, and we're doing one of our little home building projects here. The work in front of us is a blunderbuss. Whoop! Yeah! Really! And I've been shooting this gun for about the past year. I found that I needed to build up the stock comb a little bit so that it would shoot to the point of aim. And I had some conglomerations of cardboard and tape and cloth and electrical tape all strapped around this thing uh, that I hunted with. Well, I've decided now that it's between hunting seasons to do a little better solution. So we have gone out in the woods and gathered a piece of wood, cut it up, and carved a little bit of rounded extension right here to, to fit smoothly over the stock comb and have glued it in place. The glue I've used is this, which is liquid nails. Why liquid nails? I happen to have it. Uh, we use what we have available to do what we need to do. Uh, I could have used other things. You could have used Elmer's glue, for example, a milk-based glue, which would have done the same thing. Or we could have used an epoxy glue. When you mix two things together, stir them up, slather them on, put them down. Or we could have used a super glue. All of this would have done the same work. I happen to have liquid nails, that's what I used. Now we made a little pallet here out of the top of a plastic container. And we mixed this up eight hours ago. And in that we actually put some wood dust to thicken the mixture and fill some minor holes in this piece that I hand carved. So this has been sitting here. Now we're going to attach three dowels. Now these are quarter inch hardwood dowels, so you might think, uh, well, these days it's a possibility these may be three millimeter hardwood dowels. But at any rate, we got them. And we've taken them, we've cut them off, and we've rounded the edges right here so they won't be square edges. This particular piece of wood is persimmon. And persimmon does okay. It's a hard wood. It's what they used to make the heads of golf clubs, for example. I might have also used, oh, things like dogwood or even sweet gum. Gum is pretty good, by the way. But I had persimmon. It was cured, so I went ahead and carved it and used it. The thing about persimmon is that it will split if you put pressure along a grain. Move. Most woods will. Uh, sweet gum is one that's more resilient to that. But, so we've got it glued here just to hold it in place. The glue will add some strength, fine, but what's going to really retain it on are these three wooden pegs. The task is to spot holes here, three of them, drill them out a little larger, drill a quarter inch, Set these three pegs without splitting the stock Zoom! and losing the equivalent of a day's work. Woo! Now, how did we actually carve this? Well, as I say, we went out and we gathered a rather strange looking piece of persimmon wood out there. I know persimmon, so I picked it out purposely. And then we proceeded to take advantage of a natural grain in the wood and split it like that. Then we rough shaped it down with rasp and absolutely finished it off, cut it off, took chisels, and proceeded to carve out the inside. Boom! So as we went, we fitted, and so that's where we are at the moment. So, the climactic event, we're going to start drilling some holes in this stuff, and I'm going to move the camera up so you can have a closer view. 
The first thing I'm going to do is actually spot three holes with this very small diameter drill and get them down to where I want to be. We'll always start in the center hole because that is the one that's most strongly supported. And just line them up straight and attempt to go straight down. You want to go smoothly in and out of your hole. Then we come in about an inch here. Do exactly the same thing. All right. So we got three holes. Now, go ahead and change a bit. And we'll do exactly the same thing. Okay, now that just freshened them out a little bit. So we've got three holes. And this is still very firmly attached, so we have not broken the glue bond, which is excellent. We didn't want to. So now we go in with a large bit. And we do the same thing. Again, starting with the center hole. All right, the wood's getting a little hot there. I don't want to burn it. We're actually getting down into the part of the stock now. Okay, so we're now yay deep. So okay, now that will hold. All right, that's as deep as we need to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and drill out the other ones. Okay, about the same length. Right. One more go. Blue bond holding good. Let's see how we did here. All right, that feels good. You notice it's going in, and I can twist it with the fingers. Now that's that's fine. That's exactly as it should be. So these actually were quarter-inch dials, and this was actually a quarter-inch bit. Ha! <laughs> that's amazing these days. All right, now. So, I'm going to proceed, put some glue on our dials. Now, as I mentioned, I did taper these ends a little bit so they'll slip in easier. 
We we'll put a little glue on there. I'll use our goody spatula here. Smear it up good. And proceed down the center hole first. All right. See a good glop of glue there on top. Push it down. All right, that's it, guys. You don't take a two-pound hammer and go pounding on this thing. No, that's one down. As you can see from the top, there's more than enough glue. All right. Okay. Push down with the fingers. Okay. Now we have enough <laughs> clue here to uh, actually do the third one here. Very well. And get some of this excess off the surface. All right. Okay, push down, tap, so that was a success. We did not split our wood, all right, we've got these pins in here, we'll just get rid of some of this excess glue off the surface so we don't have to move it later. And what we're going to do next is wait another eight hours for this glue to set. Then, trim it off with a hacksaw. Zip, zip, zip. Why a hacksaw? Because this gives a nice smooth cut, although it takes longer to cut. Uh, it does a better job than other saws. Now that this is firmly attached, we can go ahead and rasp it and work it and finish it with the rest of the stock which is going to be the next step we'll complete. Here is a piece of wood as it came in, and it's about five feet long. Well, we cut out that straight grain section, and here are the tools I use, chisels, saw, vise, and there's some of the debris down there on the floor. When we started shaping, uh, we used chisels to actually carve out the interior, and here it is fitting to the stock, and finally pinned and glued on the stock. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, as well as Extreme Muzzle Loading, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing. Now, all of these books are also available as e-books. The keys to success are to work slowly, choose straight grain wood, sharp tools, and you leave the part oversized for maximum strength. Now, let your glue set before you do final shaping and sanding and pinning. For more information on my books, blogs, and videos, Go to my website at www.hobiesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.